Hello again everyone, it is Nature Girl Gaming, and today I'm going to be basically playing through the SGR, or Scientific Ghost Research Program, and this is kind of similar to the Reaper one, except I'm pretending that I got promoted to Ghost Egg Watcher. So I am here, and this is how my day goes. So I start by waking up, of course, and of course I brought Marla with me, my little kitten. And the first thing I would do would be to feed my pet Oculus, who is in here. So I feed them, and I begin to head out to work. Marla likes to sit on the desk while I do my research. And basically what I'm doing here is making sure that there are no foreign or invasive creatures or plant life here, and there appears to be none, but sometimes there have been. Mostly red wart, because this place is in fact under the dunes, and I begin to look around. So, there is a creature called the Gargantuan Leviathan, which is recently extinct, and they did used to live here. So basically what happened is they died off, probably from lack of food, and these are actually their skeleton. We imagine that they would have been very, very large, given the size of their skeleton. And they do have a cloaking ability on their skulls that occasionally is active during the night because they... When they don't have any light, it doesn't shine on, and that is currently why the skull is invisible. So, I also took a picture of when the skull was here, and this is a ghost leviathan. This is what we are kind of researching. So, after all of that, I go down and check on my creatures. This is a mesmer and a crab squid. We are currently in the bottom of the Lost River, and both of these things can be found in the Lost River. However, crab squids are more commonly found in the Grand Reef, which is basically the entrance to this cave. Crab squids can have a shocking pulse that can render any electronics disabled. That's why we raised this one from birth. And the mesmers can basically mimic a voice telling you to come closer, and they are a kind of a predatory thing, which I think is very, very cool. So we go back down, and now we'll start having breakfast. This is a Reaper Leviathan skull, which we have found in the deeper areas. This was actually something that a friend of mine gave me, because they are working uh, one level above me, and they are experimenting with something that actually eats Reaper Leviathans. So anyways, I would get my coffee, and my snacks, and then I would generate a new air bladder for me, because this is important. So I would put the snacks down on the table for now. I would have the coffee. And then I would sit down. And I'm going to eat. After I'm done eating, I would begin my actual day. So currently I have the set to scan for eggs. Because for some reason ghost leviathans just aren't picked up. It might be because they don't have like fully developed organs like the other creatures, but basically what this is now scanning for is eggs of any kind of creature. So we have all of that, we can see that. And then I go to cameras. And here we are. So we can go check on the creature eggs, but what's most important is to go check on the ghost leviathan. This is a juvenile ghost leviathan they appear to hatch somewhere a bit deeper on and then transform into something like this and then eventually they'll make their way out and into the Grand Reef and start their journey to the void where they will turn adults. They seem to have a spine that is possibly full of organs but it's hard to tell since they do not appear on our scanners. 
and we think that they are not actually blind, like most of the other leviathans are. But the point is, they have a kind of gel-like thing with a harder coating that will protect the gel and make it so that it does not go out. They do appear to occasionally molt, giving the gel that can be found around the Last River biome, and it is entirely possible that eventually when they die, their spine can be found. But anyways, we will... Now, after checking on it, we would go out and check on all the creature eggs just to make sure they're fine, and also all the other residents. We can see several mesmer eggs, and that's mainly all the eggs here, so I don't try that hard as long as there are at least two. This is a really, really cool creature. This is called the River Prowler, and they seemingly are somewhat related to the ghost leviathans, but a more smaller kind of case, because they do have a similar kind of spine. And I really do find them cool. They are a river predator, and this is actually the only place that they can be found. And they do appear to be blind. Ah, I crashed. <laughs> that happens a lot. They appear to live in pods of sorts, and I think that it would be pretty cool to see them hunt. So far we have not caught it on camera, but I know of some people who have. There are actually a lot more than you would think in this area. But the next thing we must check is we must thermometer this acid. So this is a toxic gas, or at least it's toxic to humans, and it contains various cave networks under it. And the point of checking it is to make sure that it has not grown too hot, because it is entirely flammable. Um, the Thalassian do like to lay their eggs down here, which is actually what this egg is. And the Thalassians are something that we will get to later when we see them more. They are actually an incredibly rare kind of creature. So there is a cave here, which is actually a pretty good example. There is tons of sulfur. We don't exactly know how they got here, because there does not appear to be any crash fish. But basically, if you look around here, you are bound to see tons of crystallized sulfur and uranium, which is a radioactive material. So basically, we can go back up after we have experimented on everything. And then, I go out to check on our main important thing. So this is a super important thing, actually. So, just like we did in the Reapers, where we did check on the ghost leviathans that were in the void, we must check in here. And, basically, this is a really cool way to take us all the way to the nesting site of the ghost leviathans. So, if you continue on here, it is pretty loud in here, because of the noise absorbing. Ghost Leviathan roars are insanely loud, but it does make the inside of this place insanely loud too. At least it does block out the Ghost Leviathan noise a slightly amount. So you can see several different kinds of plants and seeds all around. These are the gargantuan ribs up close. And they appear to have actually started to harden slightly more, or maybe be encased in some kind of plant. Just like wood could crystallize, basically. So it appears to start be crystallizing. This is actually the home of the ghost leviathans. But basically, you just go on this long train, and we'll probably see a Thalassian on the way too. But it's actually not very far. The Ghost Leviathan's journey is not that big of one. So we just continue on. And it's just a really beautiful place. I really do like this planet because just look at all of the life on it. There is a Thalassian now. So the Thalassian appears to be kind of like the whale shark, but instead of eating plankton, they eat fish. They roam around with their mouth open, and any unlucky fish might be sucked in, in which they will eat them. They do lay 
of the eggs like we had seen before, and they appear to not have any natural predators. They are incredibly rare, and they can be found in the Grand Reef, the Dunes, and the Lost River, and they have been spotted in several other places where they are only like one or two, and we do try to repopulate them, and I think that would be really, really cool if eventually they became incredibly common among these places. So we can continue going. You see some maybe juvenile gargantuan leviathan skeletons. Or maybe a species that we don't know yet. There are tons. And this is just a kind of cave network. Has tons of fish. You can see a jelly spinner fish all around. And I think that this is very, very cool. I cannot wait for my next promotion because when I get my next promotion, we're going to see the juvenile form of Ghost Leviathan. And I am incredibly excited for that. So as we get much closer, we can see the Ghost Rays. And these are incredibly friendly. You can actually ride them. And they seem to be somewhat of a guardian for the Ghost Leviathan eggs. Which I think is pretty cool. I don't know if it's like a symbiosis kind of thing, but it might be. So as we continue on, it will get darker. And there, you can see a sea dragon leviathan skeleton. That's definitely a baby. And it is possible that it wandered a little too far away, found the entrance into the Lost River, and got out of the lava zone. So when it got out of the lava zone, it probably just starved here because there was no natural plague prey it could see or it is possible that it did try to eat the ghost rays because the ghost rays do have a toxic layer of gel on their wings or flippers and this can kill a lot of creatures they don't often get attacked though but by something that doesn't know what they are it might try to attack them so as we continue on in our trail the life starts to get much, much less, and we start squeezing into a much thinner spot. Now the tree cove, which is basically where the eggs are, is rather thin, and you can actually see the tree right there, which means that we are here. So basically the ghost leviathan, there's one egg laid a year. It hatches, and then another ghost leviathan will come in lay an egg, and then come back out. So that one that we saw is probably like the last year's hatching. But basically, there is a separate entrance that's right next to the void where all of the ghost leviathans that are adults will come in, and then the first one to get there will lay an egg, and that one will hatch next year, and then another will come in. And when they hatch, they will go down into the lava zone, basically, and just be there. So right now we're in this another scanner room and we see all of these which are actually heat sources, not eggs. That's what we have it set for. But basically, if we go to camera three, I think that's the one that I'm supposed to be. Yes. So we swim down and we kind of look around. It might take a little bit of trying to find it. But there it is, right there. And there's also kind of a thing that will get rid of fog. Or like the water frequency that we have on the cameras. So as we go in, we can check on the egg to make sure that it's all fine. If it is not okay, then we do sadly have to break it so that another ghost leviathan can come in and lay one next year. But the point is, this is the egg, and it's encased in this clear thing, but the clear thing is actually the egg. So inside there is the actual ghost leviathan. It's almost like an egg inside of an egg. So that's the ghost leviathan. It will have its head kind of form out of that round circle, and then that will take the shape of a tail. So this one appears to still be fertile, which I'm very happy about. We can see all of the ghost leviathans around, along with the beautiful tree. 
And somewhere over there is actually where the lava zone is. So it's not... Ah, I fell. So it's actually not a very big journey. But basically, we can just keep on looking all around. And it's really, really pretty. And I just love it so much. So it appears to be fine now. So that's when we can go back. And I will turn up the speed a bit so that we can get there. Like, much faster. But it is beautiful here. Like, just absolutely beautiful. So we continue on our journey. And the way that you actually speed up, I don't think I explained this while we were doing the uh, SRR program, but the way that it speeds up is it pushes much more wind behind you and kind of creates a wind train that will push you much farther ahead. And I think this concept is pretty cool, like actually air travel. So you see all the Thalassians, which means that we are getting much closer to home. And you also see the giant gargantuan ribs. So this actually took a lot longer than most people would think. Just because this area has no light, so it's really... Well, I guess it does have light. It always has the same levels of light. And that means that you don't really know when it's day or night. I guess it might get slightly darker. But since it's in the cave with bioluminescence, the only real light you see would be the bioluminescence. So right now, it's kind of hard to believe, but we are actually inside the Gargantuan Leviathan Skull. It's just invisible, so you can't see it. But basically, we just continue on 752 meters down, which is actually... I forget exactly what the thing's called, but it is pretty deep. Especially for quite a bit of bioluminescence. So, after this long day, we would continue up and then go back to sleep. And then the next day will find us. But that will be the end of this tour around. I am very excited for the next promotion that I get in this world of Subnautica. So I will see you all next time. Bye-bye!